What's up guys, it's Thursday and I'm here at the store about to go in. Uh, I'm getting kind of a late start today and it's going to be a shorter day for me. I've got to drive to a little town called Stratford this afternoon and pick up something pretty cool for the store so hopefully I'll get to show you that later on. What's up guys, it's been kind of slow so far today, no customers. I've been here for about 40 minutes and I'm about to start trying to knock out some of our inventory from the corner. So if you caught my first video, you know that we did have a really tall stack of games there. Still have a small one there. Tons of peripherals, controllers, a console. And now everything is up here on the counter. And I am pricing it all and putting it out today. So we've got a few cool Japanese games in this lot. Breath of Fire. A couple Gundam games. Mostly the SD variety. Sword World, Dragon Quest V, and over here we have Final Fantasy VI, and then we have Romancing Saga 1, 2, and 3, and several other RPGs including Tactics Ogre, Let Us Cling Together, so there's some pretty cool stuff here. We also have some pretty solid Japanese GameCube titles, The Legend of Zelda, Wind Waker, Evolution, and Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles. Everything here that has a box is complete in box as well. And then for N64, we have Yoshi and a complete in box copy of Wave Race 64. I really like the Japanese artwork for some of these boxes a lot better than the US. It's a lot more colorful, the designs are better, they just pop a lot more. So this is why I left the store early. I drove out to Stratford to pick this pachinko machine up. It is a Sankyo Asuka 205. Um, I can't find the exact manufacturer year, but they made these from 1961 to the early 80s. I think it was 81. Um, judging by like the ball return and the I can't remember what the lever is called ball release and some of the other design on it I think it was uh, probably manufactured in the early 70s but everything on it works um, currently the one of the main lines for the electronics and lights and everything is disconnected and I need a D volt battery to get everything to to power on. So none of that's connected right now. But when it is, stuff like that moves, these spin when balls hit them and light up. This says wings that kind of flap and those move and this all spins and lights up and everything. It's really cool. But Definitely an awesome Facebook my marketplace find. I'm going to clean it up a little bit, reattach the one wire, and get a D-Volt battery to go in the back of it. And it should be good to go. It's even got a little ashtray there. Kind of hang your cigarette there into the ashtray, and when you're done... Flip it out to the trash. Definitely an interesting find. Alright, so I'm back at the store. It's actually the 27th now, um, Friday. We are normally open Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays, while the other business we share a space with, CNT Trading Post, is open Monday through Saturday. That's just due to time constraints on me and Richard's part. But Tony, one of the co-owners of C&T Trading Posts, just had eye surgery. His, one of his partners, Jim, who normally watches the store, is out for a gun show. So I agreed to open up the store and run both sides for him today while they were both out. So I'm just kind of here hanging out. It's been a slow day so far. 
had customers come in for CNT trading posts, but we haven't had any yet for the video game store. But we'll see how it goes. So I figured while we were slow, I'd show you a little bit more of an in-depth look at our Centipede arcade machine, cabinet, however you want to put it. Um, we got this probably two months ago, shortly after we moved in, from a local guy named Josh. I won't give out his last name, but he gave us a pretty good deal on this. We were really excited to get it in here. And everything works. Everything's all original. There's a couple minor things, but none of us really saw any reason to fix them. Machine works. Game works. It's really fun to play. We've, uh, a couple times thrown it out to customers that if they can get onto the high score scoreboard there, we usually give them a 10% discount on a single item. Unfortunately, the scoreboard resets every time you turn it off. Well, we could do a little bit more with that. But it's definitely a cool machine. I love that marquee. So we ran out of business cards about a month ago, and I finally ordered more. And the first time we ordered business cards from Vistaprint, I only ordered 100, and we were out in like two weeks. So I got 500 this time. I wish I had one of the originals to compare to, but this is what they look like now. It's got our little mascot, Nani, there. Rounded corners this time. All of our information on the back, what we buy, where we're located, and how to contact us. The first time I went with a matte finish and a lower car, lower quality card stock, and I was noticing that they were getting torn up in my wallet a lot, like after maybe a day. So I went with a higher quality this time and a gloss finish, and they feel a lot better. wanted to show you guys those it's always cool to see something with our logo on it so I'm gonna get back to the store and probably knock out the last of the inventory today and I'll let you know if anything happens alright guys I am back home now there wasn't really a whole lot else to film um, I continued working on organizing our PS2 shelf once we knock that out I can uh, finish putting out our inventory we're gonna actually take down any triplicates of games we have or any games that have more copies than three we have a game called power drum and we have 22 copies of it for some reason but um, not a whole lot other than just kind of busy work uh, we didn't really have any customers in today we had a few people come and look around and CNT Trading Post had some people look around and ask about stuff there, but it was a pretty mellow day. So, me and Richard will be the only ones at the store again tomorrow. We'll be opening up our store and CNT Trading Post because Tony will still more than likely be out. I don't expect him back in until probably Monday or Tuesday. So,. Tomorrow should be an interesting vlog. Um, I'm just kind of hanging out here at home and getting some stuff ready for tomorrow. So I'll go ahead and show you what I'm working on and then we'll call it a night. So I am currently working on an original Xbox for one of our customers. It's actually one of Richard's co-workers. Um, he buys quite a bit from us. I really appreciate all the business he's given us. But... Um, I guess this is his original Xbox, and from what I understood, it wouldn't power on, or it would power on, and then it would turn off immediately, and when it would stay on, it wasn't reading discs, so the power issue was pretty quick to, to uh, diagnose. The power cord was just bad. It was pretty corroded, and then um, once I got it open, I knew immediately what was wrong with the disk drive. Um, there's several different 
disk drives that Microsoft used for the original Xbox and the first run were what's called a Thompson. And they're really cheap Chinese DVD drives and they are pretty much guaranteed to fail. So I believe the plan right now is to pull this this DVD drive out and we're going to try to find um, a much better one to replace it with. The last line of original Xboxes that came out had a much better DVD drive. I can't recall the name of them right now, but I know I've got one in my modded Xbox. So we're going to get his DVD drive replaced and we're probably going to mod the console for him. We'll just do a simple soft mod on it, put uh, Unleashed X and load him some ROMs and call it a day. So I'll show you more on that as I progress through it, but there isn't a whole lot else I can do tonight besides tear out the disk drive. So with that, I'll talk to you guys in the morning on the next vlog, and we'll see what all happens tomorrow.